Good morning. <clears throat> and thanks for tuning in to Notations of an Happy Girl, episode 44. I hope it's 44. I didn't check. Um, I'm going to do a little something different today, but I'm still going to try to condense it down, though this one may run long. Um, I have a series of emails that I've received and inbox messages regarding relationships, love, advice, that kind of thing. And I keep getting asked, you know, will you just answer my question? No problem. So that's what I'm going to do today. We're going to call this Relationship 101. Okay? So roll with me, people. Um, in my opinion, a relationship takes two committed individuals. Two individuals who are perfectly imperfect for the rest of the world and yet perfect for each other. And to make that union last, you do need commitment, dedication, perseverance, which ties in with dedication, um, honesty, openness, trust, and the willingness to change. Those are my components for a healthy relationship. You have to be aspiring to the same goals. Sorry, I'm still trying to quit. My bad. Okay, here's my thing. First letter I got, not going to say anybody's names or email tags or anything like that. I'm very respectful of people's privacy, but I was asked to address the question. So my first question is, oh, I hate when people mistype. Okay, my partner cheated on me once. Well, he said it was only once, but I don't really know. What do I do? And this is one of the few times where I'm actually reading because I had to print it out so I would know what I'm addressing. Um, what do you do? Okay, he's cheated one time that you know about. You've asked him. Subsequently, I take it by your email. And um, he's denied doing anything else. He says it's just you and him. And he did that that one time. Here's my question. You guys need to openly and honestly discuss what caused the cheating. Now, I'm a firm believer. People cheat because they want to. Plain and freaking simple. I am not one that buys into the ideology of, well, I cheated because I don't get enough attention at home, or I cheated because my girl don't put out, or I, um, I just made a mistake. A comedian once said, you have never in your life been walking and just fell into some sex. Let's put it like that. Um, so there's nothing that just happens because every moment that encompasses that cheating from the minute that you call that person, you talk to that person, when you get to that room and you begin to take off your clothes, everything up until the entry and even after that, you have the option to stop and say, you know what, this is not right. I have somebody that I'm committed to. Let me go deal with that relationship before I drag somebody else into my headache. So my advice to you would be, you guys definitely need to talk. I'm not an advocate of just ending things. Sometimes it needs to be ended. Can't say what people can and will not stand for. Um, everybody has their own limits. Me, I have a very small threshold. But even that has been tested in my life. So I can't say, well, just leave them, girl. Because if you love them and you want to be with them, there is life after infidelity. Actually, I think that's the title of a book, too. You just have to find your place and you guys have to find that good place of honesty where he can talk to you and tell you why it happened, when it happened, and he has to be comfortable enough to give you whatever details that you want, no matter how uncomfortable it makes him. Because at this point, it's not about his comfortability. It's about yours because he violated the trust of your relationship. So that's that. Next question is... Okay, let me just get to the question. Okay. My partner and I have been together for several years, and he does not trust me. I don't know why he does not trust me. I have never done anything to, I guess she's trying to say invalidate his trust, but he likes to check my phone, my email, my Facebook. He wants all my passwords. What do I do because him constantly accusing me of things that I'm not doing are making me want to do those things? Okay, prime example of what I talk to people about. People constantly, and they can't help it, it's a subconscious thing. People bring the baggage from their previous relationship, I call it the ghost of relationships past, to their current relationship. So if you have a broken person, which pretty much all of us are broken in one way or another, you have a broken person. 
and say this person has no trust whatsoever. They've been cheated on. They've been lied to whatever the case may be. They're going to come into the relationship quite jaded and cynical, even though you're a new person. This is why we have to take time to get to know one another before we jump into an emotional relationship. You have to know where they are emotionally and what they've been through. So I'm not saying you have to sit up and have huge conversations about exes, but you need to know what this person has endured in their life so that then you know how to proceed with them. Um, what I would say is if you're not doing anything, if it puts his mind at ease to check those things, let him check them, but also let him know how, how devalued that makes you feel, um, how it hurts for you to feel like your partner does not trust you. And you mentioned later on in the email that you guys are talking about marriage, definitely something that needs to be addressed before the wedding. Um, you may want to seek out some level of professional counseling. Um, to help you work through these things. A lot of times it's a lot easier to talk when there's a mediator present because that person is completely unbiased at that point. So I would definitely say communication is the key. Give him the tools he needs to become comfortable with you. Um, I think in the email you did hint a point. You didn't say the length of time. You just said it's been six months and he's still checking stuff. So I don't know if you've been together six months or if it's just been this past six months. If it's only been six months, give him that time to get comfortable and begin to trust you. Some people don't give their trust freely. Um, if you guys have been in a long-term relationship and it's just this past six months, then it takes the two of you to pinpoint what happened six months ago to make him start feeling insecure about the situation. Okay, I'm trying to only do one minute on each question. Last question, then I got some stuff to say to sum it up. Friends, that's what this email is about. Okay, <sighs> and this is a long one, and I have to figure out how to read it because she included names and places, and I don't want to do that. Um, okay, so the gist of it is, um, my girlfriend and I have been together for almost 10 years. We both had friends when we got into the relationship, and I'm sorry, because I hate looking off to the side. Okay, let me do it like this. Okay, <laughs> so it looks like I'm looking at the camera. Let me go here. We both have friends when we got into the relationship, but a few of my friends she does not like. She says that they're whores and that whores run together in groups. What does this mean? Because I love my friends dearly and I don't judge them for what they do in their personal life. Okay. Here's the thing. <laughs> I love this question. Here's the thing with friends. Your friends and your partner needs to realize your friends cannot dictate what you do. They cannot influence what you do. I don't believe in the whole fallacy of peer pressure. People do exactly what they want to do because they want to. You can be the one good girl in an ocean of whoredom. And it will not make you a whore. It does not rub off on people. If your friends are slut muffins, let them be slut muffins. I always tell people, you need a healthy balance in your life with friends. If you're in a committed relationship, you're married, what have you, it's okay to have single friends, but you also need to have coupled friends. And nobody can dictate who your friends can be. What I would do is look into really why your partner does not like these friends and it, is it a friend in particular because she, she kind of went in depth and I think it might just be one friend and if your if your partner has an issue with that one friend then find out what it is address the issue with your partner and then if it's an issue that needs to be addressed with your friend address the issue with your friend if, if it's a friend that's overly friendly which is what it kind of sounds like Set the security level within your relationship to where it's comfortable for the both of you to come together and communicate. And once again, with all three of these scenarios, all different, different demographics, different age groups, different orientation in the relationships, but they all come back to my fundamentals of a relationship, communication, honesty, dedication, commitment, perseverance, all of that goes hand in hand to make a healthy union. Now, even in dealing with the friend thing, you cannot judge your mate by the company they keep. I know the old saying, birds of a feather, but that's not true. I have, I have five. I have five best friends, BFFs, yay. And believe it or not, they are all different. We are all within the same age range, I think. I think we all range in age from about 36 to 46. There's a, no, 35 to 46. 
there's a 10 year 11 year age gap amongst my five BFFs we all look different we're shaped different different skin tones different professions different lives some of us have one kid some of us have no kids some of us have several kids some of us drink some of us smoke you know what I'm talking about some of us do some some of us do nothing yes I have a goody goody in my crew yeah and she knows who she is but we're all different some are lesbian some are straight some are celibate. You see what I'm saying? So you can't say birds of a feather because I love all of my friends for different reasons. I might have a friend who is a whole slut hoe, which I don't. I don't. None of them are whole slut whores. But I may have a friend that's a hoe. I'm not going to judge her because she's a whore. I mean, well, because she has whorish behaviors. Because if she ain't getting paid for it, then she's not really a whore. But she may have whorish behaviors. But I'm not going to judge her for that because I still love her. I may have a friend who's a goody goody and I may want to go do some dirt. Well, I'm going to call the friend to go do the dirt instead of the goody goody. Not that I'm doing any dirt. What I'm saying is we have to get into relationships with our eyes wide open. We have to know the person that we're dealing with. So if you know your mate's history and you know your mate does not really have a history of being a slut, but she hangs with sluts. So what? Maybe she likes being the good girl out the crew. I don't know. In relationships also, there's a lot of hearsay. There's a lot of pillow talk. There's a lot of different things that are shared between couples that probably should not be shared. And if it is shared, it's fine as long as it stays within the realm of your pillow talk. It's like, and I got to say it because now it's bothering me because now it's going to go into what I'm thinking about me. Um, I had somebody question my integrity earlier this week and this video is running long so I'm not even going to go into detail but they question my integrity now this is a, a partner of a friend and the partner decided to question me because they're going through something they decided to question my honesty well you said something about honesty so did you do woo opt bam first of all that ain't none of your goddamn business sorry for cursing if I did but I didn't do what was said so it's like for me, it makes me confused as a friend, as a counselor, a confidant, what have you, as to what to share, what not to share, what to tell people they're able to share, or vice versa, or even just answering questions, because my life is an open book. A person can call me out in real life, social media, fake life, imaginary life. I don't care. I'm going to be consistently consistent, and I'm going to stand on whatever it is that I say, but it's like, I guess they looked at it like, well, I'm not really questioning your honesty per se, but if you're professing that honesty is a big component of things and you're telling people that being in a relationship takes honesty, then shouldn't you yourself be honest? Yes, I should. And I am. But at the same time, if I'm not speaking to you as a friend and I'm speaking to you as like a counselor, then it's almost like a parental kind of thing. Do as I say, not as I do. Simple. And I know that's hard to believe, but that is just what it is. When it comes down to our relationships, we have to remember some things should be kept to our gosh darn selves. Meaning, when you going through it, go through it. Deal with it. I put up a daily word the other day about the damage that we do when exiting a relationship. Something I learned from my daddy a long time ago is, if I dated you, especially if I dated you long term and I love you, or I profess to have ever loved you, then why wouldn't I want to end the relationship as your friend, as I entered it as your friend? Why do we have to be enemies just because we've decided to no longer be together? And all three of the scenarios, the cheating, the trust, and the friend issue, if not contained and dealt with properly, they can end. But if they end, don't do more damage leaving the relationship. Than you would have done if you decided to stay in the relationship because you never know that bridge you burn you may need to turn back and cross again one day then what do you do so that's my thing people answering questions relationship 101 uh i know i was long i'm at almost 15 minutes but do what you have to do to maintain your personal happiness and if your personal happiness entails or contains the presence of another then do everything in your power each day that you take a breath to keep that person as happy as possible with you as you are with yourself. But remember, it all starts in here.
You know, it starts with you. You have to love you before you can expect anybody else to love you. So if you don't love yourself or you have these delusions of grandeur and you think you're just above everybody else, then you'll never have a mate. Because if you don't love you, you can't love anybody else. And if you think you're up here and the rest of the world is down here, why would you date somebody beneath you? See what I'm saying? It all goes full circle, people. Everything I say is universally applicable, whether it's to a relationship, a job, your family, your kids, whatever. Why? Because I refuse to live my life in such a way that I structure situations to fit whatever my belief system is at the moment. I don't do it, and neither should you people. Please be well and love each other. That's my time.